the appointed hour of six, the appointed hour of six having been reached, I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA chair, I wanna welcome everyone to this meeting. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological <laughs> means. Additionally, the meeting is recorded and can be viewed on the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and the ZBA webpage. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. We will begin with a roll call of the members of the ZBA and paneled for this meeting tonight. Uh, Steve Judge, I'm here. Ms. Parks? Here. Mr. Maxfield? Here. Mr. Meadows? Here. Mr. Barrett? Here. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner, and Dave Washevitz, senior building inspector. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all of our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are reported by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raise hand function on their screen. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wish, wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about the project and input from the people from the, from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision signed by the sitting board members and is filed with the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20 day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in superior court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, ZBA FY 2021-17, College Street 1957 LLC. Request a special permit in order to allow a change of use from a one family detached dwelling to a non-owner occupied duplex dwelling, extension and alteration of the lot coverage and building area on a pre-existing non-conforming lot modification of the required additional lot area and family under dimensional regulations, footnote A, sections 3.211, 9.22, and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. Located at 187 College Street, map 14B, <clears throat> partial 169, general residence RG zoning district. This matter is continued from July 8th, 2021. Following that matter, we'll have general public comment periods. 
and other business that is not anticipated within the last 48 hours. So the first order of business tonight is a hearing on ZBA 2021-17, College Street, 1957, LLC, requesting a special permit in order to allow a change of use from a one-family detached dwelling to a non-owner occupied duplex dwelling, extension and alteration of the lot coverage and building area on a pre-existing non-conforming lot, modification of the required additional lot and area and family under dimensional regulations, footnote A, section 3.211, 9.22 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw, located at 187 College Street, map 14B, partial one, parcel 169, General Residence RG Zoning District. Members sitting on this panel are myself, Ms. Parks, Mr. Maxfield, Mr. Meadow, and Mr. Barrick. Are there any disclosures? Um, sites visits were conducted prior to our May meeting, and the following submissions have been received by town staff. Um, the ZBA application, management plan, Supplemental information prepared by Valley Management dated April 23rd. Um, these include project descriptions, a lease, a compliance, a complaint response form, reference photos for neighborhood compatibility, exterior lighting fixtures, detail and specifics. Include, um, includes a sample parking permit and additional reference photos. Plan sets, including uh, plans from, uh, of, uh, there's five plan sets. Uh, demolition plan, proposed layout plan, a grading plan, a lighting plan, and plan of the land located in Amherst. Building plans, uh, elevations, floor plans, and foundations, all dated April 23rd, 2020. Uh, planning staff submissions include a zoning map, an aerial map, topo topography map, wetlands, and an NHESP map, project application report um, dated May 20th, and one now dated, um, it's still dated May 20th. Uh, but it's been updated. Um, comments from the town engineer dated May 19th. Comments from the fire prevention officer, Mike Roy, dated May 19th, as well as uh, comments received today or yesterday from Mr. Roy. In addition to those, I do you have the date on those, Maureen? Um, I yes. printed them. Here it is. Yep, it, I printed it. Here we go. It came in at uh, August 12th of today, I guess, from Mr. Yeah. Uh, Roy. Yes, and also uh, Mike Roy uh, sent a, a memo to the board, I believe, on August the 10th, which I, I believe I forwarded as well. Yes, that as well. We also have uh, planning board comments dated 6-17-2021, and we have uh, submitted from the applicant a map of the rental property, map of the neighborhood, uh, the, the block, indicating which uh, buildings are rental, are commercial, or are school buildings. Uh, I think that's it for the submissions. Uh, um, and also, uh, and I'm sure Alan can will um, go review oh, yes. what the updated submissions. So uh, a, a, the applicant has submitted updated site plan, building plans, and application packet, um, which is relative to I believe the the lease and the management plan. Um, before uh, the applicant submitted their application, they had indicated they would have seven parking spots, um, and but but they are proposing eight parking spots. So like the management plan and the lease and mm -hmm. and so forth, those things just needed to be slightly updated to uh, to reflect that. Great. So, um, who wishes to present for the applicant? Alan. Oh, you're muted, Alan. You're muted. Yep. Okay, uh, Alan St. Hilaire, Valley Property Management. Thank you, you may proceed. Mike, uh, Mike Liu from Berkshire Design also hopes to join the meeting. Uh, I guess a thunderstorm knocked out his internet. So he's oh, headed no. over to his office in Northampton to try to catch up, but he did provide me with his materials uh, to cover if, if he can't make it on here, so. <clears throat> okay. All right, so. Uh, Thank you uh, to the board and all the members and Maureen and Dave. Thanks for uh, taking the time to revisit this with us. Uh, the 
project, as you know, was described in, in fairly good detail on the first meeting, and then we were referred to the planning board for their input. Uh, their input, uh, I think, boils down to requesting uh, that the back portion, the west portion of the uh, yard space be flattened out so that it's more usable for recreation. And uh, there was also a recommendation to cover the entrances uh, with small roofs, gable roofs to keep weather off of the landings that uh, serve the side and rear entrance to the structure. Both of those suggestions we have implemented into our plan. And so we have submitted updated architectural plans and an updated grading plan uh, by Berkshire Design which I will share the screen and, and review here shortly. Um, those were the, I believe, the most salient recommendations by the planning board. Um, and I'll just go through a quick review here of the uh, neighborhood. And I believe, uh, Mr. Judge, you had requested us to review the lot sizes as they compare to the uses and compare the proposed project to existing uses in the immediate vicinity. So I can start with that, which will also serve to kind of summarize the area. So let's uh, jumping over to the GIS here. Um, again, the neighborhood, if you will, starts at Railroad Street. Uh, anything to the west of Railroad Street is Amherst College property all the way up to the center of town, as I understand it. Uh, there's Leader Lumberyard, Amherst College Physical Plant, subject property in the middle of that block, and extends down to South Whitney Street. Uh, beyond South Whitney Street over to Southeast Street are a number of uh, commercial uses um, with a couple of rental properties across the street, uh, all the way down to the corner where there is um, to, I think it's a 150 unit complex, Aspen Chase, Dunkin' Donuts, the restaurants, furniture stores, liquor stores down to Southeast Street. So we focused on the residences between South Whitney and Railroad Street, uh, these, these number of homes here, uh, and did a bit of a review, which I'll bring up to the screen now to show you that use grid, which I believe was submitted. And this is the result of those uses. The uh, rows in this table that are highlighted in the yellow color are non-owner occupied duplex rentals <clears throat> existing. Uh, so there's one, two, three, four of those on almost identically the same lot size as the proposed project. Uh, you'll note that at 174 College, there's a non-owner occupied four unit rental on a lot that's just uh, about 5,500 or 6,000 uh, square foot larger. And another non-owner occupied duplex on a lot that's slightly larger at 197 A and B College Street. Uh, you'll also notice that there isn't a single owner occupied property on the block. They are all uh, rental properties. Uh, you can kind of see at the bottom here, it shows uh, uh, with letters on the lots, uh, R for residential, C for commercial, and uh, S for school, which would be higher education Amherst College. Uh, so that is, uh, in my opinion, kind of draws the picture that it is a very consistent use with what is presently in the neighborhood, both from a, a duplex standpoint and also from a lot size standpoint. Uh, the other that I wanted to share is the updated grading plan prepared by Berkshire Design. Hey, uh, Alan, I'll just interrupt you. Uh, Michael is now in attendance. Oh, great, okay. So then I will hold off on that. What I will do is before we switch over to Mike, I'll jump over to the updated architectural plans, which will show uh, the differences from the last meeting requested by the planning board. Uh, the, the, the plans here, and can, can everyone see my screen? Is it showing up okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. So the plans here show the first floor 
on the left, the second floor on the right, with the dividing line about where the cursor is here. Okay. Uh, everything, right above, there, right. okay. <clears throat> everything above that being the existing structure. So the existing structure is a story and a half, uh, four bedroom, one bathroom, uh, wood frame building. And the proposed structure is a four bedroom, two bathroom, two story uh, wood frame structure with complementary architectural features. Uh, the only thing that was changed on these plans uh, is you'll see in the elevations is there's a, some, some uh, a gable roof to protect the entrance on the front facade and also the, so the east elevation and also the south elevation. Everything else is as was presented in the first meeting that was by recommendation of the planning board, which was a good recommendation. Uh, other than that, there haven't been any changes since the last submission on the architectural plans. Um, so unless there's any questions or clarification needed on the site, the neighborhood and the architectural aspects of the proposed structure, I'd like to turn it over to Mike from Berkshire Design to review the slight modifications to the site and grading plan. That makes sense. Um, let's. If people have questions about what uh, has been presented so far before we move to landscaping. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Mike, I'll turn it over to you to review the, uh, the site and the, okay. the changes that were made there. All right. Uh, can you guys all hear me? I think we can. Okay. Yes. Now, I have to apologize. I, I might need your help, Alan, because um, I was at home and we, we lost everything. I lost internet and stuff. I just ran to the office and I'm trying to log on to this new new um, um, system that we have in the office. But um, and I can't I can't seem to access my work station to get the to get the drawing. So I might just, Alan, if you have that drawing, can you just put it on your screen and I'll talk about it. It's pretty simple. The only revision that we had was- um, Mike, before you continue, just give us your name and uh, oh, for the record and, sorry, and your sure. address, please. Yep. Uh, Michael, Michael Liu with the Berkshire Design Group for Allen Place, Northampton. Thank you. And yeah, we're the uh, site designer. So um, yeah, so getting back to the site plan, we, we have those couple comments from the planning board um, that were received. And their comment was to be either, you know, make, make the backyard either usable from an, um, like a wildlife or environmental point of view, or make it more usable to the, to the uh, inhabitants of this, um, you know, project. So we, what we did was we just, you know, flattened out the grades in the back. If you'll see from the bottom of the steps back there, uh, that's the 205 contour, and the next contour out to the left or the south is 204. Um, so we created a, a flatter backyard, if you will, whereas before the contours were more evenly distributed. Um, and what this does is it basically makes raises that grade a little bit so it's higher than that, that planted swale along the south property line. Um, but yeah, in, in essence, it gives the residents a little, a little bit more usable or flatter usable lawn space. And that's basically the only change we had other than kind of restriping or showing the, um, the parking spaces redistributed so we could get like a three foot wide walking lane between some of the parking spaces that pretty much lines up very well with that walk that goes up to the uh, deck of the existing house. Um, so that seems to work out pretty well. Um, and I, you know, that's basically it. We, we are in receipt. I don't know if you already talked about the um, comments from uh, Mike Roy at the fire department. Um, no, no, not yet. Okay. Um, I don't know if you want to brief the, the board members, uh, Maureen, or anything on that. Um, yeah, sure. So just to recap, the you know Mike Roy sent a memo to the board, I believe, on August 10th, and then an email today, August 12th, um, indicating that you know the width of the driveway, which I think is 12 feet wide, um, a EMT uh, 
um, is uh, ambulances uh, nine feet wide, and so they would have um, no issue entering the and exiting the property. And um, he also said that um, the aisle that that uh, Michael Lou um, showed on the site plan and the walkway are wide enough for uh, EMT to uh, go in, in and out of the house with a stretcher if, in a case of emergency. Yeah, so I, I thought his uh, comments were good. Um, you know, we don't have any objection to any of them. It seems like that they would be able to, as we, um, you know, presume that they would, you know, essentially fight a fire from College Street. Uh, it would be very, very, very difficult for them, obviously, to turn into the site. You know, and that's the same situation with all the houses and, and for, you know, for most um, single family residences throughout Amherst, you know, where they have a smaller or narrower driveway that fire trucks typically don't, you know, don't enter the property. They, they probably stay out on the street. Um, and in this case, we're pretty close to the street where they would um, be staging um, a pumper or ladder trucker or, or what have you. Um, so anyway, um, I guess kind of that's basically all we had. Um, I think that it seemed like the last time or, you know, the, the initial hearing we had, um, the ZBA members seemed to be, um, you know, pretty much uh, ready to vote on the project, um, except for the fact that, you know, we, we were asked to go before the planning board to get, you know, comments on uh, from their point of view. So that happened. Um, they basically had the two comments about the backyard space and providing some kind of shelter at the entry points um, to the um, addition, which uh, Alan showed you. So I, I think we've covered everything. Um, and I guess, unless there's anything else, Alan, you wanna say we can uh, entertain any comments or questions from the board. You're muted. Oh, you're muted, Alan. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think you did a good job of kind of summarizing everything, Mike. I believe that there were just those two small changes, um, and everybody seems to be in agreement uh, with the site configuration as it is presently proposed. So if I have a question. Um, you guys have, you, I thought you had bushes around the trash. You now have a fence. You didn't submit a detail for the fence. I mean, we could have. Oh. Uh, normally, we see a de We normally see a detail. I think it's something that we could uh, make a condition to require you to submit a detail to the building commissioner, and he could approve it unless if he finds it um, without having to submit a, a detail. Is that an earlier? Yeah. Is that an earlier? I can comment about that, Alan. Do you want to? Yeah. Do you want to say something about that, or do you want me to comment? I was just going to follow up to that uh, observation that th we had substituted the fence uh, for concern that the trash receptacles be fully screened. I had thought, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that you had shown the detail for both the six foot and the four foot on the, the package that was resubmitted. Uh, but it is going to be the, the very same look as the six foot stockade that's already been proposed and detailed just four feet tall right i think we didn't where we is didn't, that is that in the earlier uh, one yeah this is, is in the this is uh, in the original um oh okay this wasn't the one that we got got it okay that's great original. thank you thanks maureen mm -hmm. yep so the board can make a condition uh, about the height you know that you know the along the 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 side setback property line um you know the fence uh, you can make a condition that the fence shall be six feet but uh you can make a, another condition that the enclosure around the trash uh if if you want to make a condition you could say that it needs to be four feet high sure yeah okay but we've got it we've got the detail and the detail is um is for a six foot fence we just need to have the uh, can, we'll say, have a condition for the four foot that it's four yeah, feet. Both heights, yep. We can work that out, yeah. That'll comply with the drawings. Um, and lastly, I, r remind me, did you have a, a Conservation Commission review that took place and did they sign off on it? Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. We had submitted a request for determination um, and gotten a negative determination. Um, that must have what 2019, I guess, in the winter of 2019, and then then COVID came in the spring, et cetera. But yes, we did get open conservation. 
one last question, and then I'll open it up for questions from other board members. Um, in your lease, do you limit the number of residents to four in each of the units? Yes, we do. And you limit the number, you have in your lease a limit on the guests, overnight guests, and you have in your lease a limit on total guests at the time, uh, at one time in the property, right? Yes, we do. Okay. All right. Are there other questions from members of the board? <clears throat> Ms. Parks? I just can't remember how the mail delivery was resolved. Remember we were talking about right. whether to yep. come from the side or the front? I just can't remember. Where the, we, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I could I could respond to that. I, I did speak yes. with the post office and they said that they are happy to have it either on the, the street side facade or the parking side facade because either affords uh, foot access and this is a uh, this is a foot route. It's not at the curb, it's on the structure. So you've left the, the front sidewalk in place, right? We have. Uh, it seems and that that was uh, viewed as a benefit by the board as mm -hmm. opposed to removing it. Yep, and then you've created, I, one of the things we discussed was creating a space between the parking, someplace in the parking lot to allow access either for the mailman or for emergency services or right. whatever reason, but to allow access. And I see you, you've you created that extra space between uh, parking spots three and four. Um, those will be, and will those be delineated some way so that it'll be marked and uh, easy for tenants to not encroach on that space? You'll have it demarcated some way? Yes, we will. Does that answer your question, Ms. Parks? Um, I'm just wondering for the um, tenants in the in their rear building, they will need to go to the to the front of the house to collect their mail. Yes. Okay. I believe uh, Craig Meadows has raised his hand. Yes, Mr. Meadows. Um, there there have been three different numbers given for that walkway uh, between the cars. Um, when, uh, Mr. Lou just said th it's going to be a three foot walkway, the memo from the fire chief said it needed to be three and a half. And when I was in there for the, uh, in the office the other day, the inspector who we were talking to said it needed to be four feet and it needs to be strike. Um, what is it going to be? Mm. We, well, I just want to take a quick step back. My understanding from an email that I saw forwarded to me was that he was confirming that that aisle between the parking spaces was three feet and that the oh. other walkway in front of the units was three and a half feet. That's what I thought he had said, but yeah. unless there's another memo that I haven't seen. There's another memo today. Do we have a copy of that, Maureen? Yes. Yeah, so let's see here. Yeah. Mike Roy in his email today said, Maureen, yes, uh, three and a half feet is enough room for the stretcher to traverse. I have also communicated with Michael Liu from Berkshire Design on the driveway access. Hmm. Okay. And you mentioned three feet. And then the inspector right. we talked to the other day said four feet because he wanted to have room for two people to walk along beside the stretcher. Hmm. So my question is, what is it going to be? Alan, I guess you- Yeah, I, I can add to that. Um, the, the, the demarcation of the parking places is nine feet wide. Uh, the typical vehicle is only six feet, which affords some space to open doors and move between vehicles when drivers and passengers enter and exit. So the sides of the adjoining space three and space four will actually afford a much wider walkway than the three foot that is delineated as a walkway, just because of the fact that you've got a, a nine foot wide parking place and a six foot wide vehicle. I, I don't know if that's adequate. You know, he, the, again, the inspector said it needed to be striped. And if it's going to be striped, it should be striped at either three and a half or four feet. I'm not certain which, but but allowing it, uh, allowing the cars to park adjacent to it, 
uh, and you're talking about students. And if they, they park close up to it, then you've got no room. If you're trying to get a stretcher in there, you're not gonna make it. Uh, I think that, you know, in, in the case of an emergency, if there wasn't enough room to go between the cars, they would certainly exit out towards the front lawn where the emergency vehicle would be located uh, serving the dwelling. I don't think that they're uh, going to. Uh, how is that know, adequate? I think that they're going to respond in a way that's necessary given the situation at hand. Um, if if there was some requirement of striping, this is the first that we've been made aware of that. It certainly could be striped, uh, but this is the first that certainly I've heard of it. Maureen, right now we it's discussing it's, it with the inspector Meadows. the other day, and he said four feet and striped. So, well, I will say uh, that, although, you know, uh, the building inspector, David Cody did say that, uh, you know, I think that the person of importance would be the fire prevention officer who is satisfied um, with, with the proposal. You know, if the board would wishes to make a condition um, that says that, you know, the applicant needs to stripe that aisle, uh, I mean, I, I'm, Alan, are you striping the, the parking spaces themselves? We did not plan to stripe the parking places themselves because it is a gravel surface. Got it, got the it. Parking spaces would be, be delineated by the concrete wheel stops at the head of each parking place. So how do you, how do you, how do you keep that space open in your mind? How do you propose that that space be kept open, Mr. St. Hilaire? It, it could certainly be striped. Uh, we could have signage to yeah. keep it open. Uh, there, yeah. there could be, you know, there could be a couple of uh, curb stops like we have at the head of each parking place as a, as a physical barrier, if necessary, uh, to those maintain are, that aisle. So, yeah, we've included those, you know, tire stops, you know, in the, in the parking lot. At, so at the front, yeah, correct. Um, so, I believe Dave Wiskevitz has raised he, his hand. Mr. Wiskevitz. Uh, yes, uh, I'm not aware of a requirement to strike that aisle away. It is just a suggestion as a way to maintain it so that it will stay open because if people aren't aware they can't park there, then it may get blocked. So. Um, I was not part of that conversation. It was another inspector, but that I, to my knowledge, there's no requirement for it. So would uh, Mr. St. Hilaire, are you, would you be willing to stripe it? And can you in, stripe it so it's three and a half feet wide? That yes. you, may need to, to, you may need to extend the parking lot a half a foot more than your drawings right now. Would you be willing to, is that a problem for you to do that? Not at all. Not at yeah. all. And another thing that, that I could add as a suggestion is that we could put a couple of signs, much like you see on city streets that says no parking between signs to indicate yeah. the presence of the walkway. Yeah, and just make sure that they're wide enough. That they don't encroach on that three and a half feet. So they just yes. kind of, you give those, yeah. those two signs are four or four and a half feet apart. All right. Sure. Thank sure. Thank you. That, that was going to be my suggestion, just to add add six inches onto onto that you know the parking area to widen the that walkway space. So I think that's Mr. a good idea. Mr. Meadows, does that um, resolve some of your concern? Yes, it does. Good, great. All right. So um, Maureen, you'll work on a condition that we'll put in for that, and. Uh, Normally we would need a sign approval. Um, can we waive the, um, the sign approval and have it approved by the building commissioner in the sure. condition? Yep. The, so yep. that, yes. They don't have to come back for that alone? Yes. Okay. Mr. Wasiewicz, do you have your hand up or is it just, did you just fail to take it down? Okay. Um, are there any other questions from members of the, from? from members of the board for the applicant for this project. Great. If not, um, what I'd like to do, oh, we get see, see if there's any public comment before we move to 
uh, the public meeting portion. I don't see anybody at there's all no attending yeah. from the public. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's, so there's no public comment. All right. Um, so what I'd like to do is um, entertain a motion that uh, we move to a public meeting but while we keep the public hearing open in case we need additional information or public comment. Um, do I have a motion to that effect? Mr. Matchfield? is there a second? Second. Second. Ms. Parks, we'll need a roll call vote. Um, I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Barrick? Aye. Okay. In this, this portion of the meeting is where we can discuss the application uh, in general. Um, it is not normally a time for public comment. We also then want to review for possible conditions. I like to do that first before we make all of our findings because I think it helps us make the findings if we know what, if we've discussed some of the conditions. Uh, <laughs> then we have to make specific findings under section 3.3211, 9.22. I think there's a sign or parking section as well, uh, seven, I think, section seven, as well as 10.38. Um, so are there any comments from board members generally regarding the application? Um, before we talk about specific um, conditions. The staff identified several conditions in the, uh, in the project application report. Um, I think they are all uh, appropriate uh, as identified by the staff. Um, I have the one question I have for the staff is the date on the revised site plans and um, and building plans is still a May date. Is that normal or is it just? Is it, yes. It, it, it can... Yeah. So that just needs to be updated. Uh, the proposed okay. grading and planting plan is dated July first, and then the architectural plans. Uh, I'll update those. I'll. Um, Get those updated so that they're yeah yep, the, the yep. most recent plans otherwise it's confusing yep, yep. The, so the first condition is uh, is the standard boilerplate where it's got to be built to plans uh, including the um, modifications we made tonight and we'll have um, a condition about those uh, that all rooms have to be labeled um, the Condition three, the special permit granted under 3.211 shall lapse upon change in ownership. I'm not a big fan of this, but this is a zoning bylaw provision. Um, and I think this quite frankly is um, a, a notice to the to remind the applicants that if they do uh, change ownership, the special permit what is lapses and they have to come back and receive another special permit. Um, Got to have it. Property has to be registered and permitted under the residential property law bylaw. Uh, there's a management plan and complaint plan, complaint response plan that shall be followed. Changes have to come back to the zoning board of appeals. No more than four individuals shall occupy each dwelling. That's part of, part of the zoning bylaw. Uh, dark sky compliant lighting, street numbers for both dwellings shall be clearly marked. Parking is on improved services only. Um, Parking shall be clearly delineated. We also talked about striping and uh, the um, walkway and signage. Um, individual, it's almost a duplication here, but individual parking spaces shall be marked, painted. Maximum number of overnight guests. Um, we would need to fill this in from your, your lease. Maximum number of overnight visitors per unit shall be X people. I think your lease was two, is, is that correct? Can you remind me? You're muted, Alan. Oops, you're muted. Oh, there we go. Nope, he's still muted. No. Okay, can can you hear me all right? Night. Yep. Sorry about that. I got a bit of background noise, so I keep muting so as not to clutter the meeting. Um, so let me just find that section of the lease here. I think it's page 28. Yeah. Well, of the original, I, yeah, that could be wrong. All right. So the guest policy. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So 
total number of persons per dwelling unit is limited to 10. That's residents and guests. Uh, repeat visits by the same guest over consecutive periods not allowed. Uh, the, the X we have is for overnight visitors per unit. I seem to recall it being two, Six. but I did not. I, oh, overnight, got it, yeah. Overnight, yeah. Got it, yeah. But I did not check the lease. I failed to do that today. Okay, you can look that up and get okay. back to us if you would. Very good. Uh, all right, yeah. we'll do that. Get back to us before we um, vote on the conditions. Um, the property shall be free of litter and debris. Um, we, we don't have to submit the fence, the fence detail, but we will have a condition that we were talking about uh, for a four foot fence. Um, you will draft that up for us, um, Maureen. Um, and then we'll have a condition on the walkway being 3.5 feet striped and two signs and that the signs just have to go to the building commissioner for approval. They don't need to come back to the board for a, at a public meeting. Are there other conditions that the board would like to discuss? All right. If the, I don't want to cut off anybody, if there are none, I would like to start making our determinations under the various sections of the zoning bylaw. And what I'm going to do is read the, the, the subject matter of the, um, the section that we have to make a determination under and a finding other, under. And if you have any questions about this, just interrupt and, or raise your hand and, and um, seek recognition. The first is section 3.3211, non-owner occupied duplex. Um, for a non-owner occupied duplex, one or both dwelling units are rented and neither unit serves as a principal residence of one or more of the owners of the property. No dwelling unit under this use category may be occupied by a total of more than four unrelated persons. The special permit granting authority shall require the ongoing services of a qualified professional management company, the presence of an on-site manager, or similar provisions for proper management of the rental used as a condition of approval. Um, also, it lists specific requirements that shall be uh, imposed on them, uh, name and contact information, management plans, and um, that the, the special permit way, uh, lapses if you're in the RG or the RVC district. Uh, in this case, uh, it's, it is located in the RG district. Um, the board, it does already have a, li a limitation on the, uh, the, the lease and the representation is only four individuals may reside at that, um, in that property. We have a management plan. We have um, rental property management entity, a valley property management. An applicant is provided the management plan to, and a complaint response plan. And this property is located in the general RG zoning district. So it will lapse upon change of ownership. Um, so I find that, I think we can find that the requirements of section 3.3211 are met by this application. The next is article nine, section 9.2, 9.22. Special permit granting authority to, is authorized to act under provisions of section 3.3 .3 of this bylaw may under a special permit allow a non-conforming use uh, uh, for land to be changed to a spec specified use not substantially different in character or in its effect on the neighborhood or on property in the vicinity. Said authority may also authorize under a special permit a non-conforming use of a building structure or land to be extended or a non-conforming building to be structurally altered enlarged or reconstructed, provided that the authority finds such alterations, enlargements, reconstructions shall not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming use or non-conforming building. This is in section 9.22, um, um, substantially not more detrimental finding that we have to make under several circumstances. I think because of the, um, the, um, 
nature of the neighborhood, the fact that every all abutting and property is non-owner occupied rental property. There are several that are four and eight units and there's some I, in the same block um, but I don't think that there is that it creates a um, it does not create a more detrimental effect on the neighborhood uh, than the existing building. Uh, the subject is is a non-conforming lot. The lot coverage is reduced to some extent, but it is still over the, the bylaw. The building acre, uh, frontage is non-conforming, but it doesn't change. The, uh, we have to make a finding to this effect that it's not uh, more detrimental. And um, we've already done the review. So in my opinion, and unless there's others, unless there's uh, objection, I think we find that we've met the requirements of section 9.22 that it is not more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use. Okay, section seven deals with parking spaces. There's more than adequate parking spaces. So we've met the requirements of section seven. So article six, dimensional regulations deals with fences. Um, we're really looking at sections 6.24 through 6.29. Um, I won't go through all of those, but it is fencing um, complies with the, the zoning bylaw, and we're going to have more in the conditions to identify where the four foot fence will be placed. Um, but so I think it meets the requirements. I think we can find that the application meets the requirements for the dimensional requirements for fencing. Um, and now we have to move to section 10.38. And specific findings we must make under 10.38. The first is suitability of the location in the neighborhood. Um, the proposed non-owner occupied duplex is allowed within RG zoning district by special permit. The subject property is located in a neighborhood along a highly traveled state highway, Route 9, comprised of a broad range of architectural styles, single family, two family, multifamily buildings. There are also municipal, educational, retail, dining, and commercial businesses in close proximity. The immediate block, I find um, the, the immediate block has all non-owner occupied rental units on that block on both sides of the street. So I think we find that meets the requirement of 10.38 and 10.381. 10.382, 3.83, 3.85, and 3.87 all talk about nuisance in air and fl water, flood, noise, odor, dust, vibration, lights, or other visual offensive structures or site features. Um, the proposal should not have a substantial inconvenience or hazard to abutters. Uh, it would not increase air, water pollution, noise, odor, dust, vibration, lights, or visual offensive stru structures or site features. The proposal provides privacy fencing and planning to visually shield the proposed parking and trash and recycling containers from the adjacent properties to the east. The proposal provides dark sky compliant lighting. The proposal provides convenient and safe vehicular pedestrian traffic within the site and in relation to adjacent streets, properties, or improvements. 10.384, there are, it requires utility services and they are found to be sufficient and adequate for operation. 10.386 provides for conformance with parking and sign regulations. We've already, um, dealt with that issue, but we provide four parking spaces for each dwelling unit and it meets proposal requirements and we'll have a condition on the, the striping and, and uh, of the walkway and signage. 10.387, the proposal provides convenient and safe vehicular traffic uh, and movement within the site. Uh, we find that that's the case. 10.388, the proposal ensures adequate space for off-street loading and this is not, and unloading of vehicles is not applicable to the project. 10.389, uh, the proposal, we have to find that the proposal provides adequate methods of disposal or storage for sewage waste recyclables. Um, that's contained in the management plan for trash and recycling pickup, water and sewer connection, which is town sewer and methods of draining surface water. Um, town engineer has reviewed this and the most recent um, plan provides for uh, improvements in drainage off the back of the property. 10.390, the proposal ensures protection from flood hazards as stated in, in section 3.22, 3.228, considering such factors and elevation of buildings, drainage, et cetera. The property is not within a 
uh, designated flood zone as a condition of the Con Conservation Commission approval, erosion controls shall be installed and inspected by the wetlands administrator prior to start of work. 10.3, Maureen, do we need to put a, a condition in to, to um, make that effective or is that done by the Conservation Commission itself? Yeah, uh, uh, I, I don't think it's necessary for the board to okay. include a condition because um, the the uh, the approval through the ComCom um, made those we'll conditions already. So that that's, um, covers that. That's great. 10.391, uh, Natural historic scenic structures is not applicable. 10.392 provides adequate landscaping, screening for residential uses, provision of street trees, um, parking islands and buffers along the street frontage. Um, it's not a non-residential use where natural uh, exists, natural vegetation exists, um, clearing the majority of that vegetation may be retained. Uh, that we have a landscaping plan to screen from adjacent residential properties uses and landscaping in the back of the property as well. 10.393, a proposal must provide protection of adjacent properties by minimizing intrusion of lighting, parking lots and interior lighting for use of cutoffs, luminaries, light shields, etc. cetera. Um, all lighting shall include architectural sign and parking lot lighting shall be kept as um, extinguished outside of those business hours. It's not, that portion is not applicable. Um, the applicant proposes three wall mounted LED light fixtures to illuminate the parking areas and the walkways. The applicant proposes dark sky compliant light fixtures. It's unclear which fixture type is installed at each proposed location shown in the plan. It is unclear if the existing light fixture located on the north facing door, I guess we have a question here, which I did not review before the meeting. It's unclear if the existing light fixture located on the north facing door entrance to the existing house facing College Street is dark sky compliant. Um, is that the board, is that the light fixture that needed to be repaired? It's under the front of the front entrance. That, that is the light fixture that is beneath the porch roof overhang on the existing structure. I believe we touched on this briefly in the initial meeting and there was not a plan to change that fixture right? Uh, because it is it is shielded uh, presently. By the roof. Yes. Okay. 10.394, uh, the proposal avoids uh, effect on steep slopes that's not applicable. 10.395 does not create disharmony with respect to the terrain and use scale and architectural uh, structure of existing buildings in the vicinity, which have functioned, functional or visual relationships there too. Um, we touched on this in other conditions and in other reviews. Staff, uh, the, according to the applicant's po project description, the College Street neighborhood is located along a highly traveled state highway comprised of a broad range of architectural styles and uses. The proposed the architectural styles vary in terms of size, shape, and proportion, but the duplex at 187 College Street is compatible in that the heights are proposed are, are similar to, to those in the same neighborhood and in its surroundings. The proportions are uh, similar to surrounding structures. Roof shapes are sh similar. Landscaping is consistent with landscaping throughout the neighborhood and the scale of the additional building is um, similar to other re residential duplexes in the neighborhood. Um, 10.396, provides right, screenings for storage areas. Um, there's a six foot tall fence along the property line, a screen of trash uh, containers will be, and we have to change this, uh, surrounded by a fence, Maureen, to the north of the property. Good. Uh, Dave Waskevitz has raised his hand before, Dave? before we move on. Yep, Mr. Waskevitz. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Um, yep. Did one of the plans show the lighting? Was there, uh, is it on the elevation or on the site plan? I, I don't seem to have it here. I just wonder which one it was. I it think was, it, there was a lighting in the plan. original. Yep, in the original. And we have the details in the original um, application. So now Let's make sure of that. No. Uh, 
I, th I think that uh, Mr. St. Hilaire has used this um, same fixture on a couple of other um, residential properties in town. It's a very small, like, um, I'm not sure what you kind of call it. It's, it's, it's a very small wall pack type fixture. Mm -hmm. So, but you have submitted the, that in earlier drawings, is that right? Yes, we have. Just don't... We have. So that... I, can, I that... can pull it up if that's helpful. Right. And, and that has to be incorporated in the um, plan sets that we have, re we're requiring you to build by. Correct. Yeah. That was originally yeah, I want to know what it has not changed. Yep. That's, I, I think that I just want to make sure that you know what, what you're getting here, Mr. Washevitz. I've, so this is the, this is the spec sheet. I was showing the lights. Uh, so this is what it would look like. And if you give me a minute. Um, and so that, that light that you just saw, there would be one located here. Okay. One located I'll look for that. here. Yep. And one, one located here. Yep. Yep. So, so, yep. Thank you. And it's called out. Yep. That was part of the original site plan package, Dave. All right. Okay. I just don't have it with me right today. But that's sufficient for your purposes, right? Mr. Wasevitz? Yep. Sufficient? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, we left at 10.396. We just have to change the wording there to reflect the changes in the, uh, that there's going to be a fence around the uh, trash and recycling. 10.397. Um, Adequate recreational facilities. There's open space on the site. 10.398 proposals in harmony with the general purpose and intent of this bylaw. Section four of the demographics and housing of the Amherst master plan states that a mix of housing provided to meet the needs of and is affordable to the broadest spectrum of the community. The application providing a supplementary dwelling as, a re as redevelopment on existing property. The proposal has met the intent of the master plan by providing a mix of housing within the neighborhood the board needs to find whether the proposal meets the applicable zoning bylaw sections, which we have found, including footnotes A of section 3.211, 9.22, and 10.38. So we, I think we've made all findings consistent with um, needed to approve the application should that be the desire of the board. Um, we've also talked through the conditions and I think we've added, we've added some that Maureen is gonna draft subsequent to the meeting, if that's um, meets with the approval of all the members. And it's, we're have, open for discussion. I have one uh, suggested condition, um, just if Michael Liu, uh, when, um, when you uh, make the revision to the site plan for the aisle and then extending the parking area by six inches, if you could just submit an updated site plan or sure. plan set that shows that, uh, and, uh, including the lot coverage. Just so okay. we have it for our records for future. Okay. Yep. Right, right. We'll we'll prepare an updated set. And what I'll do is um, I, do you want the you know like all the drawings with the revised revision dates so they're consistent? Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah, yeah, that that's usually easier. Okay. Yep. And you and Thank you'll you. revise the lot coverage numbers to reflect the walkway and the larger walkway, right? Yes, I will. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good point, Maureen, thank you. Any comments from board members, questions or concerns? Great, um, if not, I'd entertain a motion to approve the special permit with conditions um, that we made the findings we needed to make. Um, the conditions will be um, the ones listed plus the conditions that uh, Maureen that we discussed that will be drafted by staff subsequently. Do I have a motion for that effect? Mr. Meadows, I see you by act you, you raised your hand. So a motion by hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and it looked like Mr. Maxfield was doing the same thing so we could have it a second by hand. But we can't vote by hand, so we're going to have to vote by voice. By voice. Um, all those. So, the chair votes aye. 
Ms. Parks. This is a, we're voting on the motion to approve the special permit. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. And Mr. Barrick, in your last vote as a ZBA member, what do, what do I hear? hear? You hear aye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. It passes. Good luck. Uh, Thank you very much. Continue to work Great. with the building commissioner on those uh, uh, requirements that we talked about tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I apologize for tuning in late. It all worked out. I think the you storm can't, control, yep. <laughs> you can't You can't control storms. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. The next order of business is the um, um, open to the public to discuss anything that was not on the agenda tonight. We have no public attendees. I can't believe there is any public comment on things we haven't attended and we haven't had on the agenda tonight. Um, I did want to add one thing before we leave. Um, and that is, I think everybody, ha most people have already responded to the, uh, the doodle poll that Maureen sent out. We want to try to have a administrative meeting prior to the next, if we can, prior to the next um, board meeting, which is in September. And to the extent that you are, you have issues that you want to bring up, questions that you want to raise. This is a great time to do that. It's also going to be to the benefit of new board members. If we can kind of provide some an introduction, an orientation, and a review of some of the most important parts of that, of the responsibilities. Uh, but also, if you have anything, let Maureen know if there's something that you wish specifically to discuss so we can put it on the agenda. Um, everything is on the table, of course. Uh, it'll be a public meeting but it, it will be a time when we can ask, you can ask questions or raise issues. So um, I want you to feel free to do that. And I want the, uh, and please fill out the doodle poll so we can schedule this as soon as possible. Um, members or, or the staff have anything else they'd like to bring up before we leave the uh, meeting, before we adjourn? Just to say thank you to Peter. Oh, you're, you're, I, very, you're very welcome. You've been a wonderful <laughs> group to work with. And Peter, you know, we particularly you, you are uh, a, a patient and diligent chair. I appreciate that. We will certainly Thank you very much. background. Yes, <laughs> I, will yeah. miss not, I will miss not seeing either the old tree or the uh, Mount Holyoke Library. It's, <laughs> it's uh, the best. You have the best backgrounds on the ZBA by far. Uh, and we will miss them. But thank you very much, Peter. Um, we enjoyed your time here and we wish you wish you well and if you want to come back we'd love to have you thank you <laughs> thank you very much very welcome all right um is there a motion to adjourn so moved is there a second second motion's not debatable um chair votes aye miss parks aye mr maxfield aye mr meadows Aye. And Mr. Barrick, let's hear a large vote up from you. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, everybody. We'll see you at the administrative meeting.